Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ve sallallahu ala seyyidina Muhammedin ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ve sellem. Islamic civilization was a civilization of all-encompassing beauty. And many traditional civilizations were like that as well. That of the Japanese, for example, that of the Chinese. And this is not an exaggeration. Traditional Islamic civilization believed that it was our obligation to make everything beautiful, beginning with the beauty of the human being, beginning with the beauty of good courtesy, politeness, speech, correct speech, beautiful speech, meaningful speech, dress. Uh, we created beautiful dress, beautiful architecture, and everything that we did, even the silverware that we made, the plates that we ate on, we made beautifully. And this is because God is beautiful and He loves beauty. And when God is beautiful and He loves beauty, then He does not love ugliness. And one of the principles that we adopted in Islam, that we learned from the ancients, and we learned also through our Prophet وسلم, is that beauty is the splendor of truth. So when you have the truth, and to the greater to, and the more that you know the truth, that truth will then overtake you, and it will make you virtuous. And virtue is inner beauty. And then everything you say, everything you do, everything you produce, it will also be beautiful. So beauty is not just something of peripheral value. And we regarded the production of beauty to be necessary for everything. The human being is granted the gift of language. This is what makes us distinctive. This is what makes us special. And our languages, whatever they are, whether they are Chinese or whether they are um, Urdu or German or English or Arabic or Persian or whatever they might be, all of these language, languages have sacred roots that go back to ancient prophetic pasts. And the words are filled with meaning. And so therefore, in a civilization of beauty that is based upon truth, we also want to cultivate beautiful speech, aesthetic speech that is as finely presented as possible. Uh, Goethe, may God be pleased with him, would say that I discovered among the Persians so many poets, more than seven, that I don't even regard myself to be a poet when I'm compared to them. And their poetry was extremely beautiful and extremely natural. We have Arabic poetry, we have poetry in every language. Islam goes nowhere in history, but that it brings back the gift of language, and it brings languages back to life, and it makes those languages profoundly beautiful at many different levels. And uh, languages like German, French, English have incredible poetic traditions. And we as Muslims want to be part of those traditions. We want to learn them, we want to value them, and we want to bring them to life. And we want to be able to also contribute to that. And for us in the Islamic tradition, and for perhaps all people, poetry was also closely associated with song. And Muslims were singers. And we had songs about everything. And if you go back to, to, to traditional Islamic cultures that is still somewhat intact, you'll see that. Just like uh, our families in the past, in the West, would sing us to sleep and wake us up by singing and sing to us when we were sad and sing to us when we were happy, we also did this. We were human beings. And in fact, in some parts of the Muslim world, like in India, we had beautiful songs, which were also beautiful poems, that women and men would sing when they were working, when they were sewing, when they were knitting, when they were farming, whatever they were doing. And these poems were not just beautiful, they were profound. And they taught the people great truths in simple language. 
So um, it is, I think, one of the signs of the greatness of Islam as we get it back and live it, that also we begin to speak beautiful language in whatever language we speak, and especially in these languages of the countries to which we belong, like Germany, or like the United Kingdom, or France, or elsewhere, that we cultivate a beautiful idiom, and that we learn the tradition of their idiom, and that we contribute to it.